Hey, what's up? This is Alchemist.Camp, where we learn about Elixir by building things. Today is part two in a series about protocols. So if you're totally new to Elixir protocols, I highly recommend you go check out the last episode and then come back for this one. For the rest of you, I'll just go over what we did very briefly. We made a protocol called Animal, and it has three functions that have to be implemented by any module it implements this protocol and we set up fallback to any as true which basically means if it's not implemented for a given module then it will automatically fall back to the definition for any then these two def delegate lines cause any module that implements the animal protocol to use the kind and describe functions from the implementation for any so you can see we have a definition of kind and it actually looks at the struct to see what the animal was. So the dog module will always produce structs that have a kind of many when you pass it into the protocol. And then we have a describe, which is a little bit more complicated. So note the dog does not implement describe or kind directly. It's delegated to the any protocol. Before we get started, let's open up IEX so that we can just see how everything works. Since all of this is in one file, we'll have to compile it. So C animal.ex, since it's in the same directory. We'll create a new duck and we'll call it quills. So say d equals duck.new quills. All right. And now we can use everything that's been implemented. So you can see greet was implemented. We'll say d piped into animal.greet. And as expected, it's a duck. It says quack to greet. Uh, we can also use kind. It's a duck. Or we can use describe. So this animal is a duck named Quills. It says hiss when it's scared. It says quack to communicate. It says quack when its friends arrive. So this duck automatically did all of that. But what if we're too lazy to even implement greet, speak, and warn? Uh, we want just a, a totally default action. Well, looking in any, we have uh, some default actions for greet, speak, and warn. And this would work even if we pass the list one, two, three into our protocol. It's a little bit strange, but uh, we'll make use of it just to uh, give an example. There are some protocols where it's, it is very natural. Uh, like say if you had a uh, printing protocol, maybe, maybe the, the default would be to just print nothing. Um, and here the default for greet, speak, and warn will be silence. And now let's make our new animal. We'll call it a snail, because a snail should be silent anyway. snail and the snail is going to derive animal so derive will automatically use these defaults that I showed you and def struct we still have to do so the struct is just going to be a name with nothing and we'll define the name name is or sorry we'll define new and then it takes in a name and then we'll return a snail. And that should be all we need. So as you can see, snail is quite a bit simpler than duck is. It's a much shorter module, and it's just going to use those default actions, as I said. So we'll have to recompile, and we can't use a command to recompile since it's not a mixed project. So animal.ex. And we'll make a snail and call it pokey. So s equals snail.new pokey. All right, now we've got all that functionality that we just went over. So animal.greet is dot dot dot. Animal.describe. This animal is a snail named pokey. It says dot 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 when it's scared. To communicate or when its friends arrive. So this is a super simple 
example. And you may recall a few episodes back, I actually used derive and that was for the credential schema and also the user schema in a Phoenix app. And the reason I did this was because by default, ecto schemas include a field that the poison encoder can't encode. And in the case of credentials, it also couldn't encode uh, the user relation if it's not preloaded and there were some other issues there. Um, so what I did was I told it to only encode email, password, hash, and Stripe ID. But you might be wondering how that works since this derive is very different looking from this derive. Well, let's look at the docs. So here are the Elixir docs for protocols. And you can see we have derive down here. That is a macro. And it says if your implementation passes options, or if you're generating custom code based on the struct, you need to implement a macro defined as under under deriving under under. And that is basically what Poison did. So let's have a look at that and see if we can make sense of it. So here are the options being passed in only with email, password, hash, and Stripe ID. And I've got the Poison encoder file right here. The very top is some modules, but we can see here line 66 is a def protocol for the Poison encoder. It also falls back to any, and uh, there are various implementations here. So we have one for atoms, one for bit strings, and so on and so on. And at the bottom is the implementation for any. And here is our deriving macro. So it just takes a module struct and options and passes them right along to this deriving function. However, inside this deriving function, uh, we've got a little bit of complexity, so we'll go through it bit by bit. So inside this quote do, you can see def impl poison encoder for unquote module. So in this case, we define an implementation of the poison encoder for the module passed in, which is going to be credential. So we've defined a poison encoder for credential and then there's a definition for encode. We pass some credential struct into poison.encoder.encode, and that will use the map definition, unquoting the extractor and pass in the options. And so these options have stayed the same. Our options are just only, and then that list of options. Let's look at the extractor. And it's got a condition block, and the three conditions are only, accept, and then everything else. In the case of only, it'll use map.take, which basically just gets selected fields out of a map, returns a map that contains those selected fields, and passing a struct, which is our, our credential struct, and then we're unquoting the only to get the field names. So in this case, we'd have our credential struct, which would have all the fields plus the meta field. We would pass that into map.take with these three fields, so the result would be a new map that only has the key value pairs for email, password hash, and Stripe ID. If we had called it with accept, then it does map.drop, which is basically the opposite. You'd get everything except for those specific structs. Then finally, true looks like it just removes the metadata from the struct. So this is how Derive works for the Poison Encoder, and it's a pretty good starting point for making your own custom Derive. And note that when you use Derive in the module, you don't have to name the module itself. Uh, that's taken care of implicitly. You just need to give it the protocol and then the options. So this is the more complex kind of Derive, and then we have the much simpler kind when there are no options. That's it for today. If you found it useful and want the next video, then definitely sign up at alchemist.camp. Click subscribe, click the bell on YouTube, and see you next time.